Right, let's have some more examples of functions. Let's now have one that says, we had one that was multiplication by two before, but let's change our sets around a bit. So here's our third example. If I put a to be 0, 1, 2, and 3 again, I'll just put that up here, and put b to be 0, 2, 4, and 6, and I define f of a to be 2a, then we certainly get a function. And if that's our set on the left and our set on the right, then this just this one goes to 0, that one goes to 2, that one goes to 4, and that one goes to 6. So this everybody goes to one thing, and everybody over here has something has one thing going to it. So it's a kind of very neat little correspondence, and we'll see later that that's a very special kind of function. On the other hand, if we put a to be 0, 1, 2, and 3, and b to be 0 and 2, then if we try to say that f of a equals 2a, then this is not a function. f in this way is not a function from a to b. Right? Because 2, in this case, has nowhere to go. So you can imagine that here's 0, 1, 2, and 3. Here's 0 and 2. So 0 can go here. And one can go, where can 2 go? 2 can't go anywhere. Poor little 2. It can't go anywhere. So you have to go out here somewhere, and so would 3. So that's, that's no good. That's not allowed to happen as a function. You're not allowed to have anything on the left with no home to go to. Okay. So... Um, let's think about how we compare different functions and what we could possibly do with them. Right. So functions are the same. Note. F equals G means for all, so supposing F and G are both functions from A to B, so it means for all elements of A, f of A equals g of A. Because a function is determined by what it does to all the elements. Okay? And so two functions are the same if they have the same result on every element. Okay. Um, so one thing we can do to functions... is we can compose them. So let's see. Composition of functions. A function is a sort of way of getting from a set A to a set B. right? So if you have a way of getting from A to B and a way of getting from B to C, you might think that you could do one and then the other and get all the way from A to C. And indeed, that is exactly what you can do. So given functions f from A to B and g from B to C, there is a composite So this goes from A all the way to C, and it's called G of F. So this can be a bit confusing because it looks like we've written it backwards. But you're supposed to think of this as G of F, and I'll show you why. How is it defined? G of F on an element A, we have to take an element A and decide where it's going to go over there. So what are we going to do? Well, first we're going to do f to it. We're going to take f of a. And then afterwards, we're going to do g to the result of doing f. So we get an element of b called f of a. And now that we've got an element of b, we can do g on it and send it to c. So we take g of f of a. 
So now it's a bit more obvious why this is called g of f, because here what we've done is g of f of a. And it's a little bit clearer why we decided to write it this way around, because then it comes out looking like this, with the g and the f's on the same side. So, uh, for example, if we took a to be 0, 1, and we took b to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and we took c to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then we can have a function f, which would go like this, from a to b, defined by f of a equals 2a, and then we could find, define a function g from b to c, and we could define this by g of b equals b plus 1. In that case, if we do f, and then we do g afterwards, what are we going to get? g composed with f of a equals g of f of a. But what's f of a? That's 2a. So that's g of 2a. And what happens if we plug in 2a, b equals 2a, then we get 2a plus 1. So the composite here is 2a plus 1. Hopefully that's just about legible in the bottom right hand corner. So we can have lots of examples of how we compose functions. And we can have a small theorem here about associativity, saying that if we have three functions in a row, associativity, whoops, can't spell, t with t, says that given function from A to B, a function from B to C, and a function from D C to D, F, H, we could do various different things. We could, let me see how much of this I can leave up. Let's try and leave this up. We could compose these two first, H composed with G, and then compose the result with that one. Or we could compose these two first and then compose the result with that one. But those two give the same answer. Why do they give the same answer? Well, let's just check quickly. So here's the definition of the composite. So the left-hand side gives us H composed with G of F applied to A is H composed with G applied to F of A. What does that give us? Well, that's G, that's H applied to G of F of A. So it's H of G of F of A. And if we do it the other way around, we're going to get exactly the same thing. So the right hand side, we get H of G of F applied to A is, well it's H of that applied to A, so it's H of G composed with F of A, but what's G composed with F of A? It's just G of F of A. Okay. So the left hand side equals the right hand side, so composition is associative. We say composition is associative. And notice that we had to check here, associative, that this composite equals that composite as functions. So how did we do it? We checked that they gave the same answer on every element A.